Hello, welcome to the fifth video in the LabTainer walkthrough series. LabTainers are virtual machine labs provided by the Naval Postgraduate School, built to give students hand-on experience with cybersecurity concepts. These labs and their manuals can be found at mps.edu. In this lab, we explore the LabTainers VPN Lab and VPN Lab 2, which explore host-to-host -host and host-to-gateway VPNs implemented with OpenVPN. Like any LabTainer, we initialize the lab by running LabTainer and then the LabTainer's name, which for the first part of this lab is VPN Lab. Once all necessary resources are downloaded, we can simply hit enter to start the lab. In order to verify the workings of the VPN service, we need to be able to monitor network TCP traffic. We can do this by running the command sudo tcp dump n xx i eth0 in the router terminal to display all network traffic. We can see it working properly. Let's check to see that we can fetch the target index.html file from the server. We check the server's network address by running the command ifconfig in the server terminal. We can see the results. Looking at the ifconfig results, we find the IP address of the server following ipnet address under eth0. The server's IP address here is 172.20.0.3. We now go to the client terminal and fetch the index.html file by running wget http 172.20.0.3 slash index.html. We see a successful fetch of the file. We take a look at the network traffic and TCP dump to see if we can see the network traffic. If we scroll down, we are able to easily find the request for index.html in the data stream because everything is plain text. We now want to connect to the server from the client via a host-to-host -host VPN, creating an encrypted tunnel that only the student has access to. We can use the OpenVPN application and start it up on the server by running the command sudo openvpn config server.conf daemon in the server terminal. We then start up the OpenVPN application in the client by running the command sudo openvpn config client.config daemon. With OpenVPN now running, the request for index.html will now go through an encrypted tunnel, and we expect not to be able to snoop on the network activity in the TCP dump because it will be encrypted. To make the connection, we have to first check the new tunnel IP address of the server, which we can do by the command ifconfig in the server terminal again. Looking at the ifconfig results, we find the IP address for the tunnel of the server following IPnet address under tunnel 0. The server's IP address here is 10.8.0.1. We now go to the client terminal and fetch the index.html file by running wget http 10.8.0.1 index.html. We observe a successful fetch of the file. We also take a look at the network traffic in the TCP dump again to see if we can see it. Unlike the unprotected version, we are not able to easily identify what the client and server are doing as everything is encrypted. There is no plain text index.html request for us to see. We can only surmise that one of the UDP packets contains the request and responses for the request to index.html. The host-to-host -host VPN involves two hosts participating in an encrypted and unencrypted line of communication, with the encrypted tunnel established directly between the two hosts. Before data transmission, the user is authenticated and the encryption keys are exchanged between the two parties. The advantage of this type of VPN connection is that it allows a user to connect to a specific network source securely, even if they may not have access to any other resources within the network. Unfortunately, using a VPN may also slow down your connection and certain sites may block users attempting to connect via VPNs. And that's all for the first part of VPN Lab. Make sure you exit the lab terminal and run stop lab in the original terminal to save your work. Now we can begin the second part of the labtainer. We can initialize the second part of this lab by running labtainer and VPN lab2. Once all necessary resources are downloaded, we can simply hit enter to start the lab. In order to verify the workings of the VPN service, we need to be able to monitor network TCP traffic. Like before, we can do this by running the command sudo tcpdump 
dash n dash xx dash i eight zero in the router terminal to display all network traffic. We can see it working properly. Let's check to see that we can fetch the target index.html file from the server. We check the server's network address by running the command ifconfig in the server terminal. We can see the results. Looking at the ifconfig results, we find the IP address of the server following IPNet address under each zero. The server's IP address here is 192.168.0.4. We now go to the client terminal and fetch the index.html file by running wget 192.168.0.4 slash index.html. This time, we see that the connection doesn't go through, and we are unable to fetch the desired file, as seen below. The connection fails because the client is not recognized and does not have access to the server network. To be able to access the desired server, the client must gain access to the server network first through a VPN gateway, ensuring a secured connection to access the desired server. We now want to connect to the server from the client via a hosted gateway VPN, creating an encrypted tunnel to a gateway located in front of the server that only the client has access to. We can use the OpenVPN application and start it up on the gateway by running the command sudo openvpn config gatewaycom daemon in the gateway terminal. We then start up the OpenVPN application in the client by running the command sudo openvpn config client.config daemon. With OpenVPN now running, the request for index.html will now go through an encrypted tunnel, and we now expect a successful wget connection as well as not being able to snoop on the network activity in the TCP dump because it will be encrypted. We go to the client terminal and fetch the index.html file again by running the same command, wget 192.168.0.4 index.html. We see a successful fetch of the file. We take a look at the network traffic in the TCP dump again to see if we can see the network traffic. As expected, we are not able to easily see what the client and server are doing as everything is encrypted and there is no plain text index.html request for us to see. We can only surmise that one of these UDP packets contains the requests and responses for the request for index.html. The hosted gateway VPN involves the host connecting to a server's VPN gateway, giving the host secure access to the server network. Like the host-to-host -host VPN, the setup involves authentication followed by the establishment of an encrypted tunnel over the public network, turning the requested client into another machine on the secure internal network. More specifically, the VPN client first connects to the VPN gateway server located in the network's DMZ. The gateway server then authenticates the user and creates a virtual tunnel between the remote host and the gateway for a secure connection, which upon completion allows the remote host to access any resources within the network. The advantage of this type of VPN connection is that it allows the user to securely connect to an internal network remotely from outside the company network and be authenticated at the network level. We also saw that we could directly connect to the desired internal network address using the destination's IP address. Unfortunately, using a hosted gateway VPN is not limited in its participants and is less predictable, and can easily grow beyond controllable boundaries as more and more users use this type of VPN connection. System administrators may have to prepare a scalable mechanism for client authentication and a key management system. And that's all for the second half of this lab. Make sure you exit the lab terminal and run stop lab in the original terminal to save your work. See you in the next lab.